don't give a fuck about a motherfucking pole. I'm a pull up with that stick and hit your motherfucking dog, man. This is a 1999 Plymouth Prowler. It is the single strangest production car to come out of the 1990s. And today, I'm gonna show you exactly why. I'm gonna start this with a little discussion of the 1990s. Cars in the 1990s were bland. The BMW M3 had only 240 horsepower. The top line Toyota Camry had only 190 horsepower. Cars looked like this and this and this and this. And then Chrysler, whose bland cars are possibly the blandest of them all, says, oh, by the way, we're gonna build this, and it's gonna be purple. This particular Prowler comes to me from Rayco Eurospec, a dealership here in Pennsylvania with an awesome inventory of weird and exciting cars. And this one is one of the weirdest and most exciting, since it's a one-owner car with only 9,400 original miles. So first, I'm gonna show you around and explain why it was so weird, and then I'm gonna take it for a spin. First, a little overview. The Prowler is a rear-wheel drive two-seater and it was sold from 1997 to 2002. Every Prowler used a four-speed automatic transmission made into a 3.5 liter V6. Early models had 214 horsepower, but in 1999 it bumped to 253 horses. So this one can do zero to 60 in around six seconds. Back in 1999, the starting price was $40,000 and Prowlers have held their value well. This one is offered for $31,900. But let's go back to that 3.5 liter V6, because the most unusual quirk about the Prowler is just how much it shares with other Chrysler products. You see, it would have been too expensive for cash-strapped Chrysler to engineer everything on this car from scratch. And so... The Prowler's V6 comes from the Chrysler 300M. So does the four-speed automatic transmission, although the gear lever itself is out of the Dodge Intrepid. The Prowler's steering wheel comes from the Jeep Grand Cherokee. The Prowler's center climate vents? You'll find them in Chrysler's minivans. The Prowler's stereo is straight out of a few 90s Chryslers, including the Dodge Durango. The Prowler's interior door handle came from the Dodge Viper. The Prowler's key fob came from a few 90s Chryslers, like the Dodge Ram pickup. And the window switches, mirror controls, and turn signal stock are all out of basically every 90s Chrysler. So a lot of the Prowler came from the Chrysler parts bin, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it had to. If they wanted to make it look like this, they had to keep costs down somewhere. And now here are the other quirks of the Plymouth Prowler. Now we'll start with one of the strangest quirks about the car, which is the entire trunk situation. To open the trunk, you don't push a button on the key fob or pull a lever inside the car. Instead, you push a little yellow unlabeled button behind the driver's seat. And once you push that yellow button in order to open the trunk, it's not hinged like a normal trunk. Instead, the hinges are near the bumper. So to open the trunk, this is it. This is the only way to get into the trunk in a Plymouth Prowler. Now, once you're inside the trunk, you'll find that there's really not all that much room here, although it could be worse. The convertible top, for example, doesn't really take up any space at all. Up front, you'll find the single craziest thing about the Prowler, and that is these front fenders, tires, and wheels. When you turn the steering wheel, the front fenders, which are separate from the vehicle, actually turn with it. So when you turn the car, you're also turning bodywork. Even stranger, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you can see the bodywork turn on this side of the car while you're making a turn. You can't, however, see it on the passenger side. It's blocked from your view. So when you drive down the road, you know exactly where this corner of the car is, and you just kind of have to hope that the other corner of the car is where you think it is. The other weird thing about the Prowler's wheels being detached is that it leaves a lot of important stuff exposed if people want to mess with you. Now, another weird quirk is the packaging under the hood. Because of this car's strange front-end V-shape, Plymouth just had to kind of fit stuff where it fit. And so the hood prop is actually on the hood itself. The hood latch is located in the middle of the hood, and then there's a pull tab that reaches out to the front. And then my personal favorite is the battery, which is located ahead of everything, at the very front tip of the Prowler. You also can't talk about the Prowler without mentioning the front bumpers, which sort of protrude from the front of the car. It's one of the Prowler's most distinctive design characteristics. My favorite thing about the Prowler's front bumper, you can stick your hand through it. I'm not really sure why, but I like it. Also mounted on the front bumper, the turn signals. And just in case that wasn't enough indicating power for you, there's also a set of turn signals mounted on the front fenders. 
Now in back, the turn signals and brake lights are located here on the rear fender, but the giant protruding rear bumpers do contain the reverse lights. One of the other things I love about this car is the placement of the fuel door. Now there's so much crazy wild bodywork in this thing that Plymouth could really only put the fuel door in one spot. And so, that's where it is. Another weird touch is this strange prowling cat logo, which appears on the steering wheel, on the seats, under the hood, and nowhere else on the car. Now there's more obvious badging around back. Although there's nothing on the trunk that indicates what this car is to curious onlookers, the protruding bumpers say Plymouth Prowler in a fancy script. Now, one of the things I really like about this car is the gauges. They're located in the center, but the thing that I really like is that the area surrounding them is color matched to the exterior color. Porsche would charge you two grand for that. Something about the Prowler that you probably could have guessed, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, there is absolutely no headroom in this car with the top up. I'm six foot three, and well, watch this. Unfortunately, you don't have to drive around in this car with the top up. You can always put it down. It's a pretty easy process. Just unlatch it from the windshield like in a normal car, then unlatch it from the back using a latch right below the glass, then find that yellow button to open the trunk, push the top away, close the trunk, and you're driving around in top-down style. So that's a comprehensive tour of the Prowler, and now it's time to take it on the street, which is something I've always wanted to do. You see, car enthusiasts have something of mixed opinions about the Prowler, because it was only an automatic, and it only has 250 horsepower. But for me, this car was always a little bit of a guilty pleasure. I always thought it was really cool and really crazy looking, and I've always wanted to drive one, and now I'm going to. And for more of my thoughts, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. All right. Top down the prow, it's 22 degrees today, which is perfect top down weather. It's not actually, but you can't drive a prowler and not be top down. I can't see that fender, so I have no, and the problem is that's the, the yeah. end of the car. So I can see where the hood ends, but I, I don't know where that side of the car is. And the mirrors are so small. They're so small. You catch the car in like the reflection, and it's like, I can't believe I'm driving this thing. I mean, I've driven a lot of weird cars, but this is just so bizarre looking. It just looks like nothing else on the road. All right, the ride quality is horrid. It bumps around like crazy. All right, I'm going 50. I'm gonna nail it. take another half second off the zero to 60 time. God, it's so funny to see that wheel bump as we go over bumps. I'm literally watching the front wheel hop in front of me as we go over bumps. It's bouncing like a basketball, that wheel. It's so funny. The truth is, of course, in a normal car, that's what the wheel does. You just don't see it. But it's so weird to see it. And not only seeing it, but I see the fender going too. Even if I lean forward, I can't see that wheel. 
So you just gotta kinda hope and dream. I'm sure prowler owners get to know the size of the car. Boy, with the with the visor, the visor literally blocks the entirety of the windshield. I would kill for the speedometer to be right in front of me. Instead, I'm looking at the tack, but I'm driving around four speed auto. I don't care what the tack says. And the funny thing is, the speedometer, because of my angle, this half of the speedometer is kind of out of view. Like, I can see the part that says 150 a lot better than I can see the part that says 40, which isn't really what I'm looking for. It is funny how open it feels. If you look to the side to, to, to turn and stuff, it's amazing. There's just there's just nothing around it. It's just open car. And the rear, unlike a lot of modern convertibles, the rear slopes off very dramatically. A lot of them, modern convertibles, the deck actually gets higher. And this thing is just like, see you later. So you look back there and there is nothing. It's a very interesting feeling. It's kind of cool. drive these cars and I'm not really surprised. Drive a Lamborghini, you know what it would be like. This car is surprised at how well it handles and how bad the ride is. The ride is so rough, um, but the handling is like, I thought it'd be spinching and all over the place when I thought this car was only just a sort of a style play. Uh, that's not really true. It actually kind of feels fun. It's almost like they were trying to build an actual sports car. <laughs> So here's the thing about the Prowler. It's crazy looking, and I love that. It handles pretty well, and I like that a lot too. And while a lot of people say this car is underpowered, that's not really true. No, it doesn't have a V8, but the Prowler has 250 horsepower, and it only weighs 2,800 pounds. That's a better power to weight ratio than a BMW 340i, and it should be enough. Unfortunately, performance is depressingly dulled by the Prowler's four-speed automatic transmission, but I really think that a stick shift or even a newer automatic would completely change the character of this car. Either way, that's the Plymouth Prowler, and for those of you who lived through the automotively drab 1990s and always wondered about this thing, well, now you know a little bit more about it. In order to keep costs down, you probably can't even see my forehead right now. <laughs> 50 horsepower. But I have always thought this is one of the... I don't remember what I thought. I don't give a fuck up about a motherfucking power. I'm a pull up with that stick and hit your motherfucking dough. Man, I don't give a fuck up about a motherfucking power. I'm a pull up with that stick and hit your motherfucking dough.